This video is sponsored by BlenderGrid. BlenderGrid is a render farm for accelerated rendering using the cloud and is built from the ground up to support Blender. With on-request add-on installation and the ability to set render deadlines, BlenderGrid allows you to never miss a deadline again. Hello, what is up everybody? Today we will be covering some quick tips to optimize your projects and prepare them for use with the cloud render farm service. First, we will be covering how to prepare local files for upload. Then we are going to cover some techniques on how to reduce render times and get the most out of a render farm's power. Finally, we are going to go over some common issues that users run into when using render farms and how to avoid them. Just like your local computer, a render farm needs access to all the files and assets used to create a scene in order to render it properly. If all files are not sent off correctly, then the file can cause errors or worse, waste time and money rendering a scene only to realize after the fact that, say, a texture is missing. Every render farm is different, but a lot will support at least one of two upload methods. The first method is to upload a zip file with all the local assets contained within it. All paths must be set as relative, which can be done by checking the relative checkbox when loading in a file. This method tends to be the easiest and is supported by some render farms, including Blender Grid, but isn't supported by all of them. For render farms that do not support zip uploads, the alternative is to pack all local assets into the blend file itself. This can be done easily as well by going to File, External Data, and then clicking Pack into Blend File. This option has the downside of making the blend file itself a lot bigger, which could result in issues if the render farm you're using imposes size limitations. For a lot of render farms, we will also need to bake add-ons, scripts, and simulations into the blend file. This will be different depending on which add-ons and scripts you're using, but generally, this means baking animations to keyframes. What we are trying to do is completely remove all dependencies for external add-ons before sending it off to the render farm, which might not support them. For example, to do this with animation nodes, press T to bring up the menu, and under Animation Nodes tab, go to Overview, Bake to Keyframes, and this will bake all animation nodes actions to the set keyframe range. After this is done, uncheck Auto Execute and Save. Fortunately, if you're using Blender Grid, they support popular add-ons such as animation nodes, as well as on-request add-on and script installation, so you don't have to worry about baking. Faster render times means less money and time spent rendering your scenes. If using Cycles or another similar render, this also means reducing noise as much as possible as fast as possible. Let's start off with the way we light our scenes. In Cycles, there are two main ways to add a light to a scene, either by using a mesh light or by using a lamp. From the beginning of Cycles, the idea was that mesh lights are a little more realistic, but render with more noise, while lamps are faster in situations where 100% realism is not needed or you are relying on certain sample-heavy effects such as caustics. However, things have changed a lot since the first Cycles release. In all of my tests, area lights now render slightly slower than mesh lights and even produce more noise, while the caustics seem to render the same using both. Another way to reduce noise is to use a denoiser. Cycles, as well as plenty of other renderers, like Lux Render, have a built-in denoiser. If the strength of the denoiser is turned up too high, then it can result in a very noticeable loss of detail, as well as a telltale splotchy effect. But if the image is rendered with a decent amount of samples, and the denoiser settings are tuned properly for the image, then it can be a huge time saver. <laughs> This one won't save you much time on the initial render, but it can keep you from having to render out your scene more than once. If we use render layers and compositing, we can render out our scenes using the render farm and then tweak the individual layers later using compositing for an immediate result. Especially if you're working for a client, they tend to make on-the-fly changes to things like color and would prefer changes to be made as cheaply and quickly as possible. This is really helpful if you ever have a screen in your render, as the visuals on the screen can often change during the production and using compositing can save you a lot of headaches. In most cases, it's not difficult to simply add a screen plane on a different layer and use an add blend mode to mix between the two later on. The full render pass compositing pipeline is a little more complex than what I can cover in this video, but I plan to have a full walkthrough coming soon as it's a really powerful tool. Every render farm will be different, but there are always gonna be some common mistakes we can avoid. One of the common pitfalls that people sometimes run into is not organizing their files correctly before uploading. If uploading a zip file, it's important that directories included in the file paths will exist when extracted. For the example on screen, if we zip the contents of the folder instead of the folder itself, then the top file path will not work. This is because the main folder does not actually exist when the file is extracted, so this will fail. 
The bottom file path, on the other hand, is directly relative to the path from the blend file, so it'll work just fine. Good news is, if you're using Blender Grid, they will automatically search for missing image files in all provided directories, meaning it will autocorrect for this mistake in a lot of cases. Also, don't be afraid of compression. A lot of people tend to associate the term image compression with the idea of blocky artifacts and ugly images. This isn't always the case. There are image formats such as PNG and OpenEXR, among others, which will allow you to compress your image in a lossless way. This means that redundant data is simplified, but no data is lost. So the image that goes in is the exact same image that comes out. Oftentimes, users will mistakenly turn off lossless compression, which will result in unnecessarily large file sizes, very slow transfer times, and can cause problems if your render farm imposes file size limits. And that about wraps up this video. Thank you all for watching. If you like my tutorials and would like to see more of them, be sure to like and subscribe. Big thanks to BlenderGrid for sponsoring this video, and a big thanks to my supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to become a Patreon as well, be sure to check out the link at the end of this video or in the description below. As always, I will see you next time.